Ajax from Deadpool versus the Headmaster from Deadpool 2, which villain comes out as more evil? Currently in the franchise, two of the most notable antagonists are Ajax, aka Francis Freeman, from the first Deadpool and the Headmaster from Deadpool 2. Both characters exhibit a significant degree of wickedness, but to determine who is more evil, in this video we'll take a look at their motivations, actions, impact, and any redemptive qualities for a comparative analysis of these two villains. Starting off first with their motivations. For Ajax, his motivations are primarily centered around his job as the manager of the shady workshop meant to create superhuman weapons, with his goal of breaking the spirits of those under his control so as to mold them into weapons for profit. Even at the end of the film, his driving force for killing Deadpool is business oriented. He's a pawn in a larger scheme of things, but his most egregious trait is the sadism he displays towards Wade Wilson as he tortures him in his mutation process. Now to be fair, it's possible that Ajax may very well have displayed sadism toward the other subjects in his workshop, but in the film the one and only case of sadism we see is with Wade, and that was in response to the snarky attitude that Wade displayed in the first place. Of course, nothing justifies sadism, but it could very well be that if Wade was more compliant, he could have been treated by Ajax in a more neutral manner. As for the headmaster, his motivation stems from a twisted sense of moral superiority and a deluded, self-righteous belief of his actions. As the head of the Essex House for Mutant Rehabilitation, he runs a facility that supposedly aims to cure young mutants of their powers. However, his true objective is to psychologically and physically abuse these children to suppress their mutant abilities, driven by a fanatical belief that mutants are inherently sinful and need to be reformed. As a matter of fact, his recurring phrase of blessed are the wicked who are healed by my hands is a completely made up phrase with no religious or scriptural basis anywhere. The headmaster's actions are fueled by bigotry and a perverse sense of religious zealotry. There are also some hints at him also being a PDF, but we have nothing solid to hang that hat on in the film. So while both villains have reprehensible motivations, the headmaster's actions are driven by a delusional ideology that justifies his cruelty as a form of moral duty. This makes his motivations arguably more insidious than Ajax's more straightforward sadism and financial motivation. Next, let's move on to their actions. Concerning Ajax, his actions include extreme torture, psychological manipulation and exploitation. He subjects Wade Wilson to inhumane experiments designed to trigger mutant genes resulting in severe physical and mental trauma. Ajax shows no remorse for his actions, enjoying the suffering he inflicts. His sadistic nature is highlighted by his continuous taunting of Wade even after transforming him into Deadpool, after which, in an effort to protect his business, he kidnaps Vanessa in an attempt to kill Deadpool. On a side note, there is something illogical about the actions of Ajax at the end. After Wade's transformation, Ajax tells him he can cure his appearance, which becomes an insurance of sorts that prevents Wade from killing him. But at the end, on the precipice of death, Ajax simply throws away his only lifeline and openly admits that he can't cure Wade after all. On the other hand, the headmaster engages in the systematic abuse of young mutants employing psychological and physical torture to reform them. His methods include confinement, deprivation, and indoctrination, which aim to relieve the children of their identities and powers. The headmaster's actions result in severe psychological damage to his young victims, instilling fear and self-loathing in the vital period of their formative years. Both villains engage in severe cruelty, but the fact that the headmaster's actions involve the abuse of already vulnerable children adds a particularly heinous dimension to his actions. His systematic and institutionalized approach to torture is just as psychologically and emotionally detrimental as it is physical and is arguably more malicious than the mainly physical afflictions of Ajax. Moving on to their impact for Ajax, his impact on the narrative is profound. His actions are the catalyst for Wade Wilson's transformation into Deadpool, setting the stage for the character's quest for revenge. Ajax's cruelty not only affects Wade, but also highlights the darker aspects of the mutant experimentation industry. 
contributing to the film's broader critique of unethical scientific practices. Practices that result in an unknown number of victims who have been turned into superpowered slaves, who then in turn continue to spread more pain and misery onto others. As for the headmaster, his impact is equally, or if not more significant, particularly on Russell and the broader mutant community. His abuse drives Russell to the brink of becoming the supervillain Fire Fist, a cold-blooded criminal who racks up his own body count over the next 50 years into the future, culminating in the murder of Cable's wife and daughter. Simply put, the headmaster's actions underscore themes of prejudice and the damaging effects of extremist ideologies on young minds. So both villains have a significant impact on their respective narratives. However, the headmaster's far-reaching influence extends to shaping the future actions of many more characters and introduces themes of prejudice and indoctrination, which gives his impact a broader social resonance. Next, their redemptive qualities, if any. Ajax shows no redemptive qualities throughout the film. He remains sadistic and unrepentant until his death, displaying consistent cruelty and arrogance. But on a sympathetic side, Ajax himself was once a patient in the same workshop, but became so desensitized to the point that he became callous to his own conscience. The fact that he detests his given name of Francis possibly suggests a disdain towards his family due to some resentment. Similarly, the headmaster exhibits no redemptive qualities. His actions are driven by an unwavering belief in his self-righteousness, and he shows no remorse or compassion for his victims. His death is met without any sign of redemption or acknowledgement of wrongdoing. For the verdict, neither villain demonstrates any redemptive qualities, solidifying their roles as purely evil characters within their narratives. So with all that in mind, and comparing the villainy of Ajax from Deadpool, and the headmaster from Deadpool 2. It is evident that both characters embody significant evil through their motivations, actions, and lack of redemptive qualities. However, the headmaster's twisted ideology, systematic abuse of children, and broader social impact make him the more evil of the two. His actions not only cause immediate harm, but also threaten to perpetuate a cycle of hatred and violence, adding a particularly disturbing dimension to his character. In contrast, while Ajax's sadism and cruelty are profound, they are primarily personal and driven by a desire for control and power, lacking the ideological malice that characterizes the headmaster. And because of all that, the headmaster emerges as the more wicked antagonist within the first two Deadpool movies. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below and leave a suggestion for a future character comparison if you have any suggestions. Thanks for watching and have a good one.